Hey, everybody, it's John from The Hustle Daily Show. Before we get into the news today, did you know that HubSpot launched an AI chatbot that helps you build awesome campaigns at scale with just a few prompts? It's called Campaign Assistant, and it's a totally free to use AI tool that will transform the way that you build marketing campaigns at scale. And the best part, it works seamlessly with all of HubSpot's marketing and sales tools to scale your output across email, social, and more. So AI your way into the most effective campaigns yet at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Howdy, folks. It is Tuesday, May 16th. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Rob Letters, and you are listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're going to be talking about olive oil, pasta, and uh, LinkedIn. Yeah. Climate change has hurt olive oil production in some key regions, stranding olive oil customers at a costly pit e party. And yet, while these more pressing concerns are at hand, drama among olive oil startups has stirred on LinkedIn. We'll get into all this, but first, let's take a quick look at what else is happening in the world of business and tech. Let's get crack a All right, Rob, what are you looking at? So a couple of things came across my desk today about Meta, a company that you and I have talked about quite a bit. First, in the Metaverse, a new study blew the cover off the Metaverse's gigantic financial potential, forecasting that it could add up to $3.6 trillion per year mm. to the US GDP by 2035. But there's a kicker, JC. And what is that? The study was funded by Meta, which is spending <laughs> a billion plus per month building the Metaverse. Love so, to hear that. <laughs> yeah, it raises the question, what exactly are you thinking about the metaverse these days, JC? I feel like we haven't caught up on this in a while. I'm just waiting for uh, Apple to come out with their virtual reality, mixed reality headset, yep. which will probably be with us, honestly, in a few weeks' time. This is one of your takes that I've heard a lot that I really agree with, that Apple is just going to end up eating the metaverse. Eating it alive. Yeah, well, we'll see in a few weeks what happens. I'm very excited because when Apple enters an industry, you never know what the potential exactly. is. So. so bouncing from one buzzword to another, the other meta news that I came across today is all about AI. I'm sure you've heard a lot about job replacement. I was just reading an article about Sam Altman, the guy who helped create OpenAI, who's been talking a lot about universal basic income because AI is going to take over everybody's jobs. But apparently the big job that is at risk of getting taken over right now by AI is social media moderators. Mm. So at Facebook specifically, AI is getting way better at flagging content for removal. And right now is a, at about a 97% match with human moderators. Wow. There are obviously some challenges here like nuance, context, and lacking non-English models, which will obviously keep a lot of these people employed. At least that's what experts are urging. But it seems pretty clear that these jobs could eventually make way for robot moderators. What do you think? Yeah, it's pretty repeatable task over time. And frankly, I don't think content moderation for Facebook is a job that many people aspire to have. I think right? they do it because it's a job. But I think this is one of those jobs a lot of people, at least in tech, will argue should be automated away over time. Exactly what I'm saying. If there is a job that should be taken over by robots, it's literally content moderation on social media. Right, looking at really graphic yeah. images and whatnot. <laughs> Wasn't there like a crazy expose a couple of years back about the job of a moderator and just how much insane violent yeah. imagery they're subjected to? Yeah, it sounds absolutely terrible. I'm sorry to people that are moderators that enjoy <laughs> it, but I do feel like that is probably exhibit A for a job that could be passed over to a robot. All right, JC, what have you been looking at? So one thing I was following today is a cool story. This guy, Ilya Posen, who was the founder of Pluto TV, who sold Pluto TV to Viacom for $340 million a few years ago. He's now back with a wild new startup, a wild new product, and a wild new business model for the TV industry. I want to call it a really interesting adventure that he's on, <laughs> adventure. It's called Telly, and it's a company that plans to give away this year 500,000 of its $1,000 TVs completely for free. And that's just for starters. So what's the catch, obviously? Free TVs, how the heck are they going to make money? So the company has designed from the ground up these 55-inch TVs that do not look anything like your average TV. They have a big main screen, then they have a horizontal sound bar on the bottom, and under that, another 9-inch tall interactive screen that will be used to display information on things like sports, stocks, weather, music, all the time, as well as, of course, ads. 
unskippable, unavoidable ads. So basically, the business model for this company is going to be you get the TV hardware for free and the business will be supported by constant advertising and affiliate revenue that is going to be basically always on on these TVs. So this is basically free water for TV, right? Isn't free water <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the water company that they just give away for free because there are ads on them? Yep, that's a good call. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love it. Love the model. I'm actually looking at one of these TVs right now and I don't hate it. It doesn't look that bad. It's almost like I agree. You know, 55 inch TV with a little Sonos bar and some ads underneath it. I, I don't really mind this. It's not horrible. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. I kind of think this is genius and I might actually <laughs> sign up. I'm not kidding. Uh, you know, maybe we should do it. Well, test it out. Honestly. The wait list is open today though, so can sign up. Genius. Anyway, in other news, chat GPT shirt. Yeah, Amazon is planning to invest heavily on injecting chat GPT like capabilities across all its business units. According to Bloomberg, one job listing says the company is looking to hire a senior software development engineer that will help with reimagining Amazon search with an interactive conversational experience. That should be interesting. Also, the EU approved Microsoft's $69 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard, saying the company offered antitrust concessions, such as letting customers play owned Activision games on any cloud service for the time being. Microsoft must still sway the FTC, though, so we'll have to wait and see what the FTC sees. Also, we are never retiring. Americans are hanging on to their cars longer. This year, the average age of in-use U.S. vehicles set a new record at 12 and a half years. Or in other words, and uh, I'm going to immediately regret saying this, almost old enough for a car mitzvah. <laughs> that joke was in today's newsletter. I just had to have it make an appearance in the pod. And with that, let's get to today's main story. JC, nothing really gets the blood rushing like <laughs> LinkedIn drama. And I'm really curious to hear more about this olive oil drama that's been brewing on LinkedIn. Can you tell me what's going on here? Yeah. So before we get to the drama, let's step back. Let's talk about some economics of olive oil. Perfect. <laughs> some interesting numbers about the kitchen essential that are in the news lately. And the big number that's going around is that data from the International Monetary Fund shows the global price per metric ton of olive oil closing in on $6,000, which is the highest point since 1997. Now, what's to blame? Well, in part, high temperatures and drought squeezing supply throughout the Western Mediterranean, according to Quartz. Spain, for instance, which is the world's largest producer and which usually pumps out more than a million tons of olive oil annually, has been hit particularly hard. Last year's yield there was down 50%. In Italy, which had its worst drought in decades in 2022, production there is down 37% this year. Now, thankfully, it's not all a pit of despair. Production in Greece is looking up, for instance, and production nearly doubled in Turkey in 2022. Exports are on track to triple there this year. So just some interesting economics, some numbers on a kitchen essential right there. But you know what they say, right? When it rains olive oil news, it pours olive oil news. And so, yes, I want to get to that. You know what's funny? So not only do I have like one pourable olive oil <laughs> holder, but I also, we literally have an olive oil spray bottle. Oh, uh, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. My mom <laughs> is just like a kitchen gadget aficionado and she got us that. It's amazing. Like literally if you're roasting veggies or anything like that, it's just, it's so much easier yeah. and you save olive oil. It's so much more efficient. The spray bottle is a genius invention. Oh. Whoever made the spray bottle, good for them. Appreciate it. But genius. you're going to find this interesting if you find spray bottles interesting. So recently, the CEO of Olive Oil in Squeeze Bottle startup, Graza, went viral for a LinkedIn post he made calling out a, what he says was a copycat product, which was an olive oil from another startup meant for pizza that also happens to use a squeeze bottle. Wow. So this caused quite the stir in the comments section on LinkedIn. A lot of people were writing in. The founder of a company, Haven's Kitchen, wrote, with all due respect, you did not create the squeeze bottle. Oh, fighting right? words. It's a big <laughs> ruckus. A lot of disses going back and forth. Hours later, Graza CEO returned with an apology. 
kind of got caught up in the moment. He's very passionate about their bottle design. And it seems to have brought an end to what will hopefully be enough olive oil startup drama to last us for the next hundred years. <laughs> uh, you know, unfortunately, that still leaves us with the olive oil supply and price issues, as well as an oil be damned issues with pasta prices in Italy. Oh. Yes, Italy's government last week convened crisis talks over Italian pasta prices, which were up 16.5% year over year in April, which is more than twice the country's broader inflation rate. So we'll keep a close eye on this because, it, of course, it is pasta. There's really nothing more important to discuss. <laughs> yeah, I second that notion. Pasta is super important. I love pasta. I love olive oil. We need to figure this out. We got to figure this out. Mission critical. <laughs> And bada bing, bada boom, that's going to do it for us today, folks. Thanks for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig. Our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter, which you can sign up for at thehustle.co slash email. Hope you have an awesome Tuesday. Go on, get out of here. See you tomorrow. Let me tell you about a show that I've been loving lately. It's called Entrepreneurs on Fire. It's hosted by the incredible John Lee Dumas. It's available now on the HubSpot Podcast Network. Entrepreneurs on Fire stokes inspiration and shares strategies to fire up your entrepreneurial journey and create the life that you've always dreamed of. I'm a big fan of this podcast. It has energy, it has value, and it's all about learning about entrepreneurship. I was just listening to an episode the other day. JLD interviewed Jay Rogers, who was such a wealth of information. He kind of went into how entrepreneurship chooses you. You don't necessarily choose it. And that failure only happens when you stop trying to win. A lot of gems in this one. So I highly recommend checking out that particular episode along with the rest. So go listen to Entrepreneurs on Fire wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.